So I really owe my viewers, subscribers, stumble uponers a video. I haven't made one since my little Easter basket. Uh, I've been doing some really, really hard physical labor, trying to avoid an eviction. Uh, apparently, my landlord was trying to find a way to get rid of me. Unfortunately, I complied with all of his... Uh, well, they were not reasonable demands, and he... I was selectively prosecuted, and nobody else was, so... Um, I had a little emergency. Not too long before Easter, there was a sudden snowstorm with a bad wind, and I protect my little yard with parachutes and canopies, and the snow was so sudden and so heavy that the canopies collapsed and the parachute was over the top of them. And it was so cold and it stayed frozen so that the snow weighed down the parachute. I couldn't get the door open for three days because it was so heavy. And then the next thing I know, people are yelling at me that there's zoning violations and all this. Now, I can tell by the other, this is a recreational vehicle park, they call it. It's actually a parking lot. Uh, I can tell by the other houses, the other trailers, and even the landlord's property that no zoning was ever called, that they lied to me about that, and that they freaked out because the parachutes had collapsed. Nobody bothered to ask if I was okay or if I needed any help. Nobody seen me in about a month because I couldn't, I couldn't go out because it was too cold, and then the collapse. So I thought this would be a good time to make a response video to you, too. I'm not going to try to pronounce your name because I don't know. So I will link you in the description to my thing, to my video. But you just got some kind of scary news with a whole little cluster of issues. Now, I think you used the word affliction, which is one of those words that really tears me up because it kind of sounds pitiful. I mean, I don't know in your cultural context. I don't know where you are. You sound Northern European, but I don't know. You could live down the street from me for all I know. But it may be a cultural thing that the word affliction doesn't have so much stigma attached to it where you are. But where I am, people with disabilities really get their hackles up when they hear the word affliction. It makes us sound like we've got the plague and like we're pitiful. So we're not way into that. Anyway, you got a whole cluster of uh, diagnoses and stuff and symptoms and you're pretty overwhelmed and it sounds pretty exhausting. Um, one of the problems, is, so I'm just going to call it disabilities is my point because I, I'm more comfortable with that word. If you want to argue with me, please do it in, <laughs> in private uh, message because, you know, I don't mean any disrespect. But I would consider it disabilities, and they are invisible disabilities, which in some respects make it even harder to um, have one's physical and psychological conditions taken seriously because people uh, are very judgmental about other people's physical issues. Uh, and especially in this new, well, it's not so new, but this revived, neoconservative, Ayn Rand kind of world where it's pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Well, what if you don't have any boots? Uh, blaming the victim. You're not trying hard enough. You're lazy. You want to live off the dole. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it takes willpower. Well, when one has physiological and neurological issues, no amount of willpower is going to... You can't create your own reality. You cannot create your own reality. That's another myth. So I wanted you to know that I understand the overwhelm and how toxic that can be because right now you're sort of dependent on the medical industrial complex. I would, this is all based on my own personal experience. Please understand this. I would uh, change that as soon as possible your social support around your disabilities, my social support around my disabilities needs to be people who are not in the medical industrial complex, but just regular folks on the streets who are struggling with 
oh, not even the same issues I am, but struggling with uh, medical and psychiatric issues and finding it hard to be taken seriously and need a place for some sanctuary and some respect and some camaraderie and skill sharing and telling jokes and um, laughing and, you know. So I would definitely suggest you, uh, if you feel like it, uh, start building a network of support and among your peers, you know, peer support, not among the professional community, but just regular old rank and file people that have to get up every day and deal with stuff. I find it uh, enormously liberating and uh, encouraging and validating because even medical professionals, uh, okay, you go to a hospital, you're in a lot of, I go to the hospital, I'm in a lot of pain. They think I have multiple sclerosis on top of everything else. I know I have neurological damage. I know that. I've been in pain, in physical pain my whole life. And to this day, I want to know, are other people always in pain? Or I mean, for me, it's normal. It has been since I was a little kid. Every step, everything I pick up is physically painful. Turning my head too quickly, all of that is painful. So they think I might have multiple sclerosis, but... They haven't finished doing the diagnostic tests, and as you know, the medical system in the United States is not very good, and it's hard for me to get people to authorize the testing because justifying the expense of the test and so on. It's a nightmare. Um, but I will, I, like right now, I'm in horrible pain because I did way too hard physical work here all by myself. That's why nobody's heard from me on YouTube or any place else much because I was doing this extremely hard physical work mostly in really cold weather and all alone and it was a lot of heavy lifting and moving things and uh, pulling ropes and building things out of wood and nails and all kinds of stuff. And I've really, really badly hurt myself in a way that really concerns me. I have a bad left shoulder anyway. Uh, child abuse, my shoulder was broken and later in adulthood dislocated. So I tend to favor my right arm. And I have hurt my right arm to the point where I'm having to use my left arm to do most of the heavy lifting. And I'm concerned that what if my right arm doesn't come back? But if I go to a doctor, they're going to think that I'm seeking pain medication. And I'm so not. I would love to get physical therapy or maybe there might be some kind of laparoscopic surgical thing. But if it's neurological, of course, none of that will help. Um, this isn't neurological. This is, some, this is something physical. It feels like I'm being stabbed in the neck and in the back. I've hurt myself and I've hurt myself pretty bad. The weight of my own arm hurts. Um, and I don't know if it will repair, and I'm afraid to go seek medical care because I'm afraid they'll think that all I want is drugs. So be aware that once you are diagnosed with a disability and you have a cluster, uh, even the medical industrial complex may not, again, I don't know where you live, I don't know if you have the class privilege of getting good medical care or you just have to take the scrapings off the bottom of the barrel that I do, you know, student interns and eh, any quacks. Uh, but you may find yourself not being taken seriously by the staff and by the medical professionals either, which is another really good reason to have peer support. Try not, if you can, to get overwhelmed by uh, what sound like pretty alarming symptoms at first. These are stresses of life that can and will be dealt with. You just need to learn to habituate yourself to them and take care of your body and not pretend like your body is the way it used to be, but is the way it is now. Factor in for limitations and so on. You have limits. It's okay. We're not Superman. We're only Superman when we're playing Minecraft, right? Because we can fly and we can kill monsters and... We can swim in lava and, well, shoot, that's uncreative and stuff. But, you know, for me, Minecraft, I mean, my gosh, I can jump. I can run. 
I can build things, I, you know, stuff that I can't do so easily in real life. I can collect wealth. I can have a beautiful house. Can't do those things in real life. Well, I have a nice house, but I mean, it's a travel trailer in a parking lot. You know what I mean? So, uh, the symptoms are going to seem overwhelming at first, and try not to feed into that and feel powerless. Uh, you can manage this. In fact, you must manage this. You are the best caretaker of your disabilities that you've got. So that's another good reason for fear support and for uh, researching what's going on with your body uh, based on scientific information, but also start listening to your body. Start paying attention to it more and what it needs and like maybe some of the symptoms in your legs and so on maybe those might be stress related they might be diet related who knows start paying more attention to your daily uh, routine how you carry yourself your posture your gait how you walk start paying more attention to your body your body needs some stuff and it's trying to tell you that it needs it and you, you will be better off if you listen to it believe me and don't try to fight it and don't play macho man like, oh, I'll just overcome it. No, not necessarily. I mean, there's some adaptations and uh, you will find strengths that you didn't know you have. And you will find prosthetic ways to get around the limitations of your body and be able to do things that you probably never thought of doing. I'm forever more inventing mechanisms and so on to get work done around here. Um, for instance, being low income, I really can't afford the laundromat, so I do my own laundry. Well, it's much easier to put it, they're called Rubbermaid tubs, they're about, maybe 10, to hold about 10 gallons of water. Put a little laundry soap in it, wait till the soap dissolves, it's powdered soap, and it's cold water. I use a garden hose. Um, and then, don't put too much clothing in it, and sit down right next to it, and plunge it up and down with a plunger, sort of like churning butter. And my clothes get a lot cleaner than they would in the laundromat. And if I'm careful and I count how many times I plunge, I only allow myself to plunge 50 at a time. Um, if I'm careful and I take my time and let it soak, and it may take two days to get a couple of loads done in various tubs, but I can do my own laundry without hurting myself. Um, I got a gasoline-powered bicycle. It's not working right now because my neighbor broke it. But uh, I got that because I didn't have a car and it was so painful to walk across town. It's about 10 miles round trip to get to the grocery store and bring home groceries. Um, plus, people would laugh at me and mock me because I took a baby stroller with a, a ice chest in it and a, a laundry hamper. Uh, the ice chest was for the perishables, and the laundry hamper was for the loose things like bread and whatnot. It was in a baby stroller, and people would pretend they were going to run me off the roads for their cars into me, call me names, throw things at me. So I was very glad to get that gasoline-powered bicycle. And it's something that I can repair. I need the money to replace some parts, but I can repair it, and I can carry it, which you can't do with a broken-down car. So, or roll it, at least. Um... So pay attention to your body, be kind to yourself, get good support, do real research, uh, scientific research, not woo-woo, new age, uh, crackpot stuff about what your symptoms are and what your situation is. Take good care of yourself and try to remain calm. You're fine the way you are. You're not a failure. You didn't screw up. It's okay to be who you are. And you'll learn some really good stuff. So take good care of yourself. Sorry I haven't been online very much, guys. There's another video coming out soon where I show you my most recent projects. Bye. Have a good day.